Hello to those who have just joined. Welcome to today's webinar titled The Secret to Faster Authentication with CA Single Sign-On. My name is Laura. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. Let's get started. I want to remind you that everyone's lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and our presenters will address it at the end of the webinar. Our presenter, sorry, Wade, will address it at the end of the webinar, if time allows. If we're not able to get to your question during the live webcast, we'll email you directly to follow up. This webcast is being recorded, and a link to the recording, along with a copy of the presentation slides, will be emailed to you within the next 24 hours. I would like to introduce Wade Ellery from Radiant Logic. Wade is a senior solutions architect with more than 19 years increasing responsibility and experience in enterprise IT, direct and channel software, and services sales and management. He holds in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance, and IT security products. So without further ado, uh, Wade, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Laura. And good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on which time zone you're sitting in today. Appreciate you taking some time out of your day to join us to learn how to create faster authentication and authorization in your CA single sign-on. CA single sign-on is formerly branded as CA SiteMinder, and for convenience today, because I've been saying SiteMinder for the past 12 years, I'll use SiteMinder as the reference to the product from CA that provides single sign-on to web applications. The key here is being able to actually virtualize and federate your identity sources so you'll be able to reclaim the speed of authentication and provide better authorization and policy enforcement in your CA environment. We'll explain in detail today the challenges that CA is facing in the modern world and how we can actually solve a lot of those challenges for SiteMinder and provide better performance. You can probably think of SiteMinder as a high performance solution. It's highly tuned. It's very well developed. It's a mature platform. Uh, much like a uh, modern sports car, it has many features uh, designed to make it easier and faster and more effective to support users for single sign-on into their web applications. Uh, much like the car with uh, anti-lock brakes and uh, traction control, supercharged engine, it's tuned and designed to run on very smooth roads and run very quickly and very efficiently in that space. But there's a challenge for any kind of high-performance vehicle when you put it on a rough road or an icy road. All the advantages built in for traction control and uh, engine performance and handling uh, suffer dramatically when the environment itself is not optimal for that particular solution. And this is a challenge that we're seeing with SiteMinder. It's not a fault of SiteMinder at all. It is tuned and performs ex excellently in an ideal environment. But there are challenges in the real world that we're facing today that make it more difficult for CA to deliver the performance it's capable of. And that's what we want to remedy for you today. So we're going to look at that performance in a number of areas. Authentication is a very critical issue. And this is directly affects the end user experience. How long does it take for someone to authenticate when they come into the platform? How difficult is that for them to be able to authenticate themselves and get access that they need? And this is where end user experience is very important. And according to recent surveys, you've got about 130 milliseconds before an end user will start to be frustrated with an authentication or login experience. So we'll talk about how we can actually cut that down dramatically and give back that high performance for CA, SiteMinder, even if the roads themselves are icy. And then authorization performance. There's a number of factors now affecting authorization other than the simple a single set of groups in one domain or one source of identity. And we'll talk about how you can actually leverage Radiant Logic now to build a much broader set of attributes and group memberships and a much broader set of uh, values to make your policies and authorization decisions on and how we can do that efficiently and effectively so that the uh, opportunity for SiteMinder actually grows in terms of the performance it can deliver, not just in speed but in scope and in granularity. And then really talking directly about direct, directory performance and supporting uh, the CA SiteMinder platform. There's a number of functions in CA that, do, that rely on uh, a directory, and, and directory that can buy, provide very fast and very effective writes and reads of the data that's actually uh, transactional or session-based 
around the actual use of the application by users. And we want to be able to optimize that performance also so that the full features of SiteMinder can be taken advantage of and not used. But the key here is to be able to do all of this in your current environment without disrupting your current identity infrastructure, without causing your applications to have to be rewritten, without causing SiteMinder additional uh, configuration or challenges, without causing disruption to the backend sources of identity in your environment. And all that today can be achieved with Radiant Logic. So it's an excellent combination of being able to give you immediate advantages, solve some dramatic problems, and do it without disrupting your, your internal environment. So hopefully we'll be able to share information today that will make that clear and obvious. And then we can follow on uh, later and address any particular questions we have at the end of the webinar about details we didn't touch on. So to give you an idea of, of what's happening, why isn't SiteMinder racing down the freeway on a six-lane paved road all by itself? Well, that's kind of the world we used to live in in the center of this cube when everything was fairly well controlled. All my computers sat on my internal network. All my constituents were actually employees or contractors, and I had control over what they did. I could limit their access. I could put them all in one location. And my applications were all pretty much centered on my enterprise infrastructure. So in that scenario, I had a very simple world to maintain. Now, I will admit that 10 years ago, we thought it was really complicated, and, and very few of us uh, were able to do it effectively. Uh, but as we look at the world now, we see that things have exploded on three axes. I'm seeing platforms and systems that I need to be able to manage now way beyond my desktop environment where I'm actually looking at, at devices and, and tablets and phones that are outside even the firewall. Uh, they may even be sitting in a Starbucks somewhere as when someone's accessing my resources. And those resources may be accessed now on a whole myriad of applications that are not necessarily owned or completely controlled by myself or by my organization, but may be external and may be actually uh, hosted uh, on a network beyond my own, or in a partner, or in a cloud, or a SaaS application. So my control of that area has also been lost. And then on the access on the right, the constituencies that we're asking SiteMinder to, to, to respond to and support now has grown, dramatic, grown dramatically. So that not just employees and contractors that we have a narrow focus on and we can get particular information about, but potentially customers, and partners, and members, and vendors and all the other people out there that I need to share information with, that I need to give access to my resources, that I need to be able to incorporate in my platform, that dramatically stresses the, uh, the environment that SiteMinder has to work in. And this creates that rough, icy road where traction is harder to get, and it's harder to understand how to deal with all those constituencies if you're stuck using the traditional model and the traditional methods of connecting to those systems. So in a, in a simple world, uh, SiteMinder does an amazingly good job if it's connecting to one source of identity, and then it can focus on what it's good at, which is creating sessions for the user, managing those session variables, providing single sign-on authentication to multiple portals, integrating multiple applications into a seamless experience, making sure that end user can get where they need to go, gets the authorization they need, and is able to do that with a minimal amount of effort and very quickly. Unfortunately. We don't really have that single directory infrastructure anymore. What's happened is our environment has grown so dramatically now, our identity sources are spread across multiple domains and multiple forests. This may have been an original architectural decision based on regional distribution. It may have been through the acquisition of other companies that have been absorbed into the corporation, but they still exist in their own domains. It may be a business model that has my operations segmented between different systems within my organization, each of those with their own identity forest or domain. There's additional directories that have been brought up to be able to support internal applications that have identity information in them. There are databases now that have additional attributes that I may need to support authentication and authorization. All these sources of identity on the back end make it very difficult for SiteMinder to have that single place to go, single place to find all my users quickly and to be able to get them authenticated and find the attributes I need to authorize them. So there's a real challenge in that model. Now, I can't just go ahead, though, and collapse everything on the back end down to that ideal single point physically 
because I have a lot of internal applications that have legacy connectivity to those back-end systems that I can't necessarily just go in and replace everything with a single directory without potentially breaking mission-critical functionality and disrupting the business function of the organization. So how do I deal with this scenario? How do I build a solution where I don't have to disrupt my back-end, but I can provide that, that ideal scenario for SiteMinder? We'll take a look at this in a couple of different steps and focus on individual pieces of the puzzle as we explain what the challenge is and then how that challenge can be addressed. The first point is authentication performance. And this, as we mentioned in the beginning, is key for the user experience. And it's your own experience every day that can validate this for you. How often have you gone to a website? Have you gone to an application? Have you gone to a login screen, entered your credentials, or click the button knowing you already had uh, integrated authentication and had to wait for the little wheel or the little dial or whatever might be the marker spinning on your screen while the back end slowly authenticated you and brought you into the application. This is extremely frustrating. And in a large environment where identities live in multiple locations, the, action, the answer for SiteMinder for that particular challenge is I will do what we call round robin or sequential lookup of the user on my different systems until I find him because I don't inherently know where he exists. So when John Smith comes into SiteMinder and he may have his credentials stored in the LDAP directory because he's an external user, my system needs to go and look in the different backend sources to find John. And once he finds John, then I can go ahead and authenticate John's credentials. But if John happens to be in the LDAP directory, and I happen to be looking for them in the Active Directory first, I'm going to create a cycle of delays before I actually find John's identity. And as you can see in this illustration on the screen now, we have a lookup starting on the left-hand corner there in System A. And that would be the first place you go to look up for John. If we happen to find John in System A, then John gets authenticated and we're on our way. But if he's not in System A, then I have to roll over to System B, make the second call. That adds more time to the process. I have to go through the lookups of that whole directory and make sure that he's not there. If he's not there, then I repeat the process again, potentially on a database back end that could be very slow, finally on another LDAP directory where I find John. And the accumulation of time for each of those steps is the total amount of time that John actually spends waiting for me to say his credentials are accurate and I can go ahead and authenticate him. Now you might say, well, let's go ahead and put the biggest directory in the front. We'll put the little directories in the back. And most of our hits will be on the big directory. And that's fine, except that everybody that's in the smaller directories or in the databases is going to wait for you to iterate through your whole large directory and all that additional time before you see the back end. And you're going to do a lookup on the large directory for every authentication authorization action you get loading more weight on that directory and taking more performance away for other functions. Then you say, well, let's put the little guys up front and we'll put the big one in the back. Well, then you're more than likely going to statistically have more misses on the little directories because more people will live in the big directory on the back. So there's really not an easy way to solve this problem by just moving the pieces around on the table. You really need to change the way the operation works. And we'll show you how to do that. And as you can see here, basically each system you add as an identity source increases the amount of time it takes for that user to authenticate. And this is not an unusual scenario. We have many customers that have uh, applications that have multiple sources of identity, multiple places where their customers may be stored. And they don't clearly know where to look for that customer, so they have this challenge of sequentially moving through their environment. Or, or if you have a multiple domain, multiple forest model, and you need to look up a user, you've got that very same challenge. So we can definitely help you address that issue. One example here, and this is with a, a major international Fortune 15 beverage company. Uh, their system in its native model of doing round robin lookups in SiteMinder was doing 13 million authentication calls a day to authenticate users accessing applications through SiteMinder using the traditional round robin model. Now, by being able to implement Radiant Logic, and we'll show you in a little bit what the advantage is and how we do that, we were able to cut that number of lookups per day down from 13 million to 2.2 million. And this is a dramatic reduction, about 85%, in the amount of lookup traffic that was taking place to be able to authenticate users on that platform. 
Now, there's two big benefits to this process. One, the user's experience is, is increased in value and in cut in time by 80%. So they're seeing a marked increase in their ability to get into the system faster, less frustration, less uh, dissatisfaction with the experience. And at the same time, I've cut roughly uh, 11 million calls off of my back-end system, 11 million less requests that had to be processed by, by, by my directories. That opens up a tremendous amount of throughput for other transactions and other actions. It dramatically reduces the amount of infrastructure I need to support that many uh, users on the front end because I've got uh, 11 million less calls that I have to process now in order to support the system. So the benefits here are twofold, user experience and uh, structural reduction of load on your back ends and being able to do more with less, which is a mantra that we see repeated in the IT industry constantly. You need to have better performance, you need to have a better experience, but you need to do it with less resources, with less cost. So that's what Radiant Logic can deliver for you. And the way we do that, how do we actually perform that magic, is that Radiant Logic has the ability to connect to multiple sources of identity, whether it's a directory, Active Directory, or an LDAP, a database platform that supports JDBC connection, a web services connection to a back-end um, application store, a flat file, any of the many ways that identity may be stored in your environment, Radiant Logic can connect to those back-end systems, bring forward both the identity data and also the structure and the schema and the protocol and the format of that data and build a single global profile, a single flat representation of all those identities across all those backend platforms. So when CA Site Miner goes to do an authentication call, it finds a single flat list of all the users. There's no broad directory to search from. And as we'll see a little bit later, by optimizing the performance inside uh, Radiant Logic Federated Identity Service, we're able to respond to that request for authorization or authentication very quickly and very fast across that larger, broader environment here. And the other benefit to this scenario is that it's very simple now to add additional sources of identity. So if you acquire another organization, you can link their Active Directory into Radiant Logic's Federated Identity Service and immediately give them access to all the applications being managed by CA SiteMinder. Or if you have a, another constituency in your organization that you want to be able to start providing access to a particular application and you want to leverage CA for that, then you can go ahead and add that application to, to the portal uh, application supported by CA SiteMinder, add that new constituency to the Federated Identity Service, and all this becomes a seamless process of connecting those systems together. It really makes it much more flexible, much more easily adapted. And because we can virtualize and create any uh, directory structure that you need, any of the hierarchies, any of the structures, any of the relationships that exist in those back-end systems can be preserved by Radiant Logic and shared with SiteMinder for authorization decisions. And on top of that, we can create new structural relationships between the information, new hierarchies or flattened trees so that other functions within CA can be supported even if the back-end systems themselves didn't natively control, didn't natively contain that information or have that particular structure available. So by bringing Radiant Logic into the fold here, you've addressed the major issue of authentication by being able to give CA, SiteMinder, one place to go for the user very quickly, get the answers they need and solve that particular end user's problem. This also applies not just to a web access management solution like CA SiteMinder, but also, when you start looking at, say, a single sign-on for federated access to cloud applications, very much the same scenario. I have multiple applications in my federated access layer on the top of the screen here being accessed internally and externally. These may be using SAML or WSFED, OAuth, any number of protocols to provide that single sign-on experience. But just as we saw with web applications and SiteMinder, we have the same challenge with the federated access that is addressed by Radiant Logic's ability to aggregate together multiple AD domains, additional directories, databases, uh, even application information, even potentially information that's stored in a SaaS or cloud application can be pulled into Radiant One, aggregated into that global profile, and then leveraged to 
uh, assist in authentication for the uh, SAS applications, uh, and also for authorization for building that rich claim that's needed to give the users proper authorization and access to resources within those applications. So it's not limited to simply web access management and, and the SiteMinder model. It has the same benefits in, in every scenario where you're looking at the, the advantage of having a single point to go to for your credentials, a single point to go to for your identities and your authorization attributes. And that may be also a, a, a move towards an Office 365 model where uh, Microsoft's Azure would love to see a single point where all those users exist. You can deliver that with Radiant Logic across multiple solutions. The key in this discussion is, again, optimizing this around SiteMinder, because SiteMinder is definitely the leader in the space of web access management and the richest product on the market right now to provide that kind of functionality. So not only do we have authentication as a challenge, but the next step that, that SiteMinder goes through is the authorization for that user. How do you control what access that user has to those applications? And how can you manage that most effectively? Traditionally, if you look at the bottom left-hand side of the, of the screen here, you will have had an original identity directory store, which has user identities in it and attributes for those users. And then you may have had an additional store somewhere in your organization that contained additional information that you wanted to leverage in your site minor policies. You may want to have a particular manager, which exists in an HR database, be an attribute used to make a decision about what access a user has, depending on what manager he has. So you have to join that information together. You have to be able to have a ability for SiteMinder to look at the user uh, identity and then go to the second database source and find the matching value for that particular user, who's, who is his manager, and then bring that together into one argument that you can then return to the policy engine to say, this is John Smith, and his manager is William Jones. And based on that, make your authorization decision. Now, that join alone is, is a bit expensive. And when we say expensive, we mean that it takes time, it takes processing, it takes effort. So you're actually spending resources or time. And both of those relate to money. So it's used the term expense to, to imply that the more expensive something is, the more resources or time you have to spend uh, achieving it. And that same simple single join is, is itself expensive, especially on a back-end database that might be relatively slow to act. But when you start talking about a more complex environment, and every one of our customers has what we would consider a fairly complex environment, because the nature of IT is we've been growing over the last 15 years. We've been becoming uh, larger and more complex and adding more sources of identity, adding more attributes to our roles, adding more complex authorization to our applications. So the need to create a profile that has more interesting or more usable attributes in it, more group membership, information from different sources um, is very critical. We have an, a customer, as an excellent example, has multiple product lines within their organization. Each of those product lines grew up with its own store of users and its own store of attributes for those users. And users may exist in multiple back-end stores because they may use more than one product. For those users to have a seamless experience of being able to go into the company's portal and see all the products they interact with at once, be able to go into the ordering and order tracking and delivery system for each product with a single authentication, SiteMinder needs to be able to see all that information in one joined profile. But the problem with joining profiles is really twofold. One, you have potentially information stored in different heterogeneous sources. Uh, it may be an LDAP. It may be an Active Directory. It may be in a SQL table. It may be an INET org person. There's all sorts of different ways that information is stored. Think of it as each system speaking a different language. And the challenge is that you want to be able to uh, write a, a paragraph uh, having to use four different languages that can be read by a person that only understands one language. So how do you mix together all these different sources and make this information usable? On top of that, the simple physical process of linking together or joining information across platforms, even if they're heterogeneous, excuse me, homogeneous, is going to be expensive. Again, it's going to take processing time. It's going to take physical time for that process to actually complete. So there's two challenges here. One is being able to 
work across multiple protocols, and two is just the physical time and effort it takes to build that single list of attributes from multiple different stores. So as you go through each of these joins, you're adding additional effort and additional time to that process. And this is all time that the user is sitting in his screen waiting for that particular result to occur, waiting for the, uh, the final answer to come back. What do I have auth access to auth authorization to access? So this is going to be problematic in, in many scenarios, and especially as we try and leverage more and more functionality to provide a more seamless experience. We're seeing now that our, our users, uh, our customers' users, are expecting what we call the Amazon experience. Um, I should get from any company I go to, any website I go to, Google Speed, so it should happen quicker than I can click on it, and then I should have an Amazon experience where I show up and I see everything I want to be able to access in one place. You already know what I've been doing in the past. You suggest things that I may want to do in the future. You make my experience less effort on my part by being able to leverage all this information. This is, again, expensive to build this experience for the end user using traditional models. Radiant Logic's virtual directory server and our, our Radiant One Federated Identity Service provides you with a platform to deliver that very experience with very little effort and overhead on the site on the part of SiteMinder. Again, because we can actually correlate and aggregate multiple backends, not only can we bring together multiple authentication points to do a single lookup across all the sources at once and find the user to authenticate them. When we start doing authorization, we can actually build what we call a global profile. I can join together all the attributes of the user in all the systems that their identity exists, and I can do that ahead of the request by SiteMinder for access or authorization information. So by joining that information in the background, building that global profile, and having it available at the speed of a directory, then I have SiteMinder being able to make an authorization call and get the answer it needs with all the attributes that it needs to be able to use to make its decision very quickly, very effectively, and very seamlessly for SiteMinder. Again, one place to look, all your questions are answered. So for the end user, that spinning wheel disappears. For the end user, they start to get an experience that can be built on attributes from all the sources, from all the applications or products or endpoints that they potentially have identity on. And on top of this benefit here, it's not just attributes that we're talking about, but a lot of applications leverage groups. And there may be legacy groups that exist in these back-end platforms that you want to be able to expose that group membership to the application without disrupting the way it's been, uh, been set up and designed, and all that can be brought forward. But there's also a benefit to being able to create a group based dynamically on the attributes of the user from multiple back-end platforms. So if you want to use group authorization to give access to application uh, roles, you can do that and base that group membership not just on a static list that has to be maintained by an administrator on one platform, but as you see in the slide at the bottom here, I've connected to three systems, an LDAP directory, an active directory, and a database. I've joined this user information from all three of these sources together to build on the right-hand side of the big blue box a correlated identity view. This is a view to my user's attributes correlated across all those platforms. And then based on the fact in the left-hand dynamic groups view that he has a clearance level of one that came out of his database, he has title of VP of sales that came out of his LDAP, and he has a regional of, of Pittsburgh that came out of his Active Directory, I'm able to make a decision that he is a member of the PA sales group. So when CA makes a call back to Radiant Logic to say, uh, what does Andrew Fuller's access, and I can say Andrew Fuller's a, a member of the PA sales group, and then CA site money can go ahead and make its authorization decision based on that information. So based on the attributes on the back end, I can actually use groups to provide authorization. I can also support static groups if I wanted to, to man those, or, or a combination or a hybrid model where I have static users and dynamically populated users in my group. This gives you an ability to start moving towards an attribute-based access control model while still leveraging your existing SiteMinder infrastructure, still leveraging groups that SiteMinder and the applications understand very clearly, but being able now to start tying back that access 
to the actual attributes that traditionally we build into roles and then roles then generate groups and groups then generate access, we can skip that middle layer and give you a almost direct model to move from attributes to authorization in your CA SiteMinder applications today, again without disrupting either the back end identity sources or the front end SiteMinder functionality. So this is an added benefit you basically get for free, but it gives you tremendous flexibilities in the area of authorization. So we've addressed the challenge of authentication. We give you a single place to go and, and a very fast way to do lookups for those users to authenticate them. And then we can even pass those credentials to the proper back end with a single call. So we can reduce your overhead by 80 or 90% in lookups for authentication. And then on authorization, we give you the ability to avoid the overhead, the time, the effort to build those joins with SiteMinder and let it actually be done in the background by Radiant Logic, provide ability to present that single view of pre-calculated attributes across all your systems, and even leverage those attributes to generate dynamic group membership so you can authorize in your traditional model but have advantages of all that back-end information. This, for our customers, has been a tremendous windfall in terms of being able to really start now to manage the policies in SiteMinder in a way that allow them to enforce the security model that they wish they could enforce, where in the past they had issues potentially with uh, just bottlenecks or the challenges within the platform of being able to deliver that particular functionality. Now there's one more area that I want to touch on where Radiant Logic can have a real positive benefit with uh, CA SiteMinder, and that's in the area of being able to actually cache or store information locally in our HDAP, which is our highly available LDAP directory and be able to make that information available for SiteMinder uh, very quickly. This is available because Radiant Logic, as you've seen in the little icon we use to display the product, is actually two solutions wrapped into one, or two, two areas of uh, functionality bundled into one solution. The, the blue layer there is our logical layer. It's the integration layer that lets us go ahead and do all the magic we talked about of being able to connect to multiple backends that have different protocols of databases or directories or web services, being able to aggregate all those different schemas and structures together, be able to reform those schemas and structures into new models that represent the information the way you want without disrupting the back end, and then be able to make that information available to SiteMinder or other applications as an LDAP call or an arrest call and give back a JSON response or expose it as a SQL table. A myriad of ways to manage that information. There's actually a tremendous amount of capabilities in the product that are even beyond what we can touch on today, but we can address a large number of challenges with that particular layer. And then at the same time, we have our HDAP, which is our storage layer based on big data technology. And what HDAP gives you is the ability to leverage a couple of different technologies today um, that, that solve a real issue for uh, SiteMinder and other solutions that need to write back to that directory. HDAP provides the ability to, to increase the amount of uh, writes you can do or decrease the amount of time on writing to the back end. So you can actually start to manage password policies and session management information in Radiant Logic uh, Federated Identity Service in our HDAP layer. Traditional directories have, are very good at doing a read, and they're very good at doing a read if they're looking for a unique piece of information in that directory. Let me find the, the one user unique identity across this long list. That's something that directories are tuned for. But they have a challenge when they're doing writes. It takes a lot of overhead. It actually clogs up the system. And you can actually uh, stop responding to read requests when you're doing a large number of writes because the system will be bogged down doing that. And you get the effect of a, a denial of service or, or a lack of uh, availability for the system to answer read requests. Um, so what happens is the, the traditional model is, well, put in more servers, add more servers to the, to the mix. Well, then you have a problem about replicating information between those servers to keep them all in sync, which again puts more load on the system, which again drives you to the denial of service model. So it's sort of a catch-22 in that model. So a lot of organizations looked at that and said, well, my LDAP directory can't support rights, so I'm just going to forego policy management or local policy stores, or I'm going to do something else less performant. Uh, I'm going to turn off password policies on the, on the SiteMinder side and just uh, let that go and, and hope for the best. 
Um, but what you're able to do now with Radiant Logic is use our solution to store both the identity information that we were looking at earlier and also the session information. Because our HDAP model uses block level replication, as we'll see in a minute, between our nodes, and we're using a Lucene indexing to optimize the store of the data, we can write back to HDAP 10 times faster than a typical LDAP. And that will avoid that denial of service bottleneck where you have contention between writes coming in from CA doing SiteMinder doing session management variables. When's the last time this user clicked on a button? How long before I clean out his system? Am I leaving him in the platform indefinitely? There's all those particular decisions that CA SiteMinder needs to make about managing that session. And being the very mature product that it is, that is one of the areas that CA SiteMinder shines is in session management. In, in taking all the potential scenarios of a user where he's in a mission critical application that's highly secure, I don't want to let him uh, be inactive for more than a certain amount of time. But another application is just a, an informational portal and if he, he walks away and has lunch and comes back, I'm going to let him still have access to that because there's nothing there I need to worry about. So I can set up all that session information on an application by application basis on a policy level but I need a place to store that data, and I need a place to store that information about what that particular user sessions look like. So to take advantage of all that power in CA SiteMinder, you need to have a responsive store, and that's what you're getting with Radian Logic. On top of solving the authentication and the authorization challenges of the big blue bubble, we're able to let you store that information locally and address one of the challenges that you see traditionally in being able to support that very robust functionality of password management and session management within CA SiteMinder. So to achieve that, and this gives you sort of an illustration of the model we have here for deploying Radiant Logic's Federated Identity Service, it's traditionally now a three-node cluster, and that three-node cluster is very important. Much like the RAID array on a hard drive, these nodes are self-healing and self-supporting. They use block-level replication between the nodes and that's really equivalent to the difference between doing a file transfer from one hard drive to another by dragging the files over and watching on your screen as that little file icon floats across the middle of your screen and it says it'll be done in two hours, and actually cloning a drive where you use software that actually does a block level copy of the drive and in five or ten minutes you've made a full copy of a, of a terabyte drive. So that differential in technology is what we leverage to replicate information between the nodes within Radiant Logic's virtual directory server. And each one of those nodes is, is pointed to by a load balancer and can take a, write, a read request and process a user's uh, or site miner's access request simultaneously. So you have three points of access to the information. The information is kept current by block level replication. So there is not a contention there at any point where syncing the information between the nodes is going to affect the ability to answer a read request. On top of that, we can add additional nodes that are particularly just follower nodes will actually also answer read requests. But in the case of the loss of a particular server, if one of the nodes goes down, inside that main core there, we have a leader and follower topology. Any one of the followers can replace the leader if the leader becomes unavailable and take over the role of leadership. When the replacement server is brought into the cluster, the leader will automatically rebuild that replacement server, bring it up to the exact copy of the original of the leader itself at that point in time, and bring it back into the uh, hive so it's able to respond to requests. All this is done automatically. So the, the ability to withstand loss of, of system, loss of uh, platform or access to a node is, is recovered from very immediately and very easily with a minimum amount of effort on the outside, which gives you real high availability. And because you can add additional nodes on an on-demand basis, if I have a peak in, in enrollments every October when open enrollment goes open, I need to be able to process more authentication requests for all the retirees that only come in once a year. I can scale up very easily. And then in January when enrollment closes, I can scale those follower servers down take them off the, the cluster, and I've not affected any of the functionality here, but I've been able to respond to requirements for additional bandwidth. So there's some real power in this technology, and this is built, again, on the Apache Hadoop Big Data model. It's open source uh, technology around Lucene and around Zookeeper. Now, the key with Lucene is Lucene is a bottom-up index. 
and is a bottom-up index, much like Google indexes the Internet, what Lucene gives you the ability to do is a free text search across any of the attributes, any of the values stored inside Radiant Logic's HDAP. This is a generational leap forward in capabilities for an LDAP directory. Traditional LDAP directory, as I mentioned, is designed to let you look up a unique user, only that attribute only exists once, out of a long list. It does that very effectively, very quickly. But it becomes a challenge when you start doing things like dynamic groups, or you start doing things like attribute-based access control, or any kind of reporting where you say, well, I don't want to look for just John Smith on this list where he only exists once. I want to look for everyone who has Smith anywhere in their profile. Or I want to look for anyone that's in sales, they're on the East Coast, and they work for John Smith. Those kind of searches will basically grind a traditional LDAP server to an absolute stop they will actually not respond because the complexity of storing and making that cascading search of multiple possible uh, returns is not what they're able to, to do reasonably well. Radiant Logic is optimized for that. And that's been the deciding factor for a number of our customers, realizing that as they move forward, as they, as they move into the next generation of, of what they call digital identity, especially on the customer side of the business, you're going to have to be able to do multiple attribute, multiple result searches, and be able to do that very quickly because that's the kind of authentication authorization needed to give that Amazon experience to your customers, to your end users, to everyone that is expecting it. You can't do that in a traditional LDAP model, but you can with Radiant Logic. So the benefits just keep coming with this particular platform to solve that in, in issue. Now, one of the key pieces here is also our ability to listen to the back end platform, the original source or the, the, the source of truth for identity, and because we're storing a local copy of that information in particular scenarios, we want to be able to detect a change on the back end of the platform. Even if you're writing that update to Radiant Logic and we're applying the change to the back end, we're always going to write to the back end first, and then when we recognize a change and we listen on the back end for changes, we will then process that change through our queuing system and notify Radiant Logic uh, Federated Identity Service that there's been an update to the back end target. Uh, John Smith's uh, title has changed from VP of Sales to Senior VP of Sales. Now this may affect dynamic groups he's a member of. It may affect authorization decisions in the policy engine for SiteMinder. So we need to reflect that change. We'll recognize that his record's been updated and we'll make a direct call to the source to pull that new record in and update our local store of that record. So there's a lot of process and a lot of mechanisms in here to make sure that we only apply updates that have actually been applied to the back end store and that we, we find that update in what we call near real time because we're actually monitoring for changes on systems that will support that type of process and we're applying that information so that the information that we provide to SiteMinder to make decisions is as accurate and as up to date as any information available on the network about that particular user profile. So just to give you an idea here of sort of the mechanism that, that Radiant Logic Federated Identity Service uses to perform this sort of magic that I've talked about. I've actually had someone in, in, a, in a presentation saying that's just not possible. Because in, in some ways, we grew up believing there's certain laws, there's certain physical laws that apply to directories and, and databases, and there's certain things that you just can't do with them very easily. Every directory has a single structure, and that's all you can live with. And when you start talking about defining the laws of gravity, about actually doing things like re supporting multiple directory structures in a single store, or being able to transform protocols on the fly, or being able to actually generate attributes that don't exist in a native system by concatenating or, or um, morphing attribute values and, and present a different result, all that sounds a bit like it's uh, science fiction. But that's the advantage of Radiant One's Federated Identity Service. This is science fact right now. And moving from the left to the right is sort of the way the system works. We connect to the back-end platforms. We're going to extract both the data, and we may be proxying to that data, so we're just taking a view of it, or we may be actually storing that data. If it's a system that doesn't respond quickly like a database, you may want to store it locally, and we'll listen for changes on the back-end. Or we can be the single store for that information if you want us to be that repository. We're also going to pull the structure that comes with that data, because the, the value of data is not just the data point, but what is it related to? I'm John Smith. That's great. 
what company do you work for, where are you located, what is your manager's name, what groups are you a membership member of, all that other information is what gives value to knowing John Smith. So we bring all that data, all that relationship uh, with us into the product, and then we can aggregate John Smith across multiple systems. We can understand all the places he exists and bring that together and join those into one global profile, correlate that information, integrate it, and then apply groups and roles and context to that and give you different ways of using that data within Radiant Logic to provide authentication authorization answers and then present that information to the application that's looking for it in the protocol and in the schema and in the structure that it's expecting. I may have an AD back end where I have user objects and schema and I have an LDAP front end looking for INET org person. There are some different fields in there that are named differently. And if you try and put an AD field into an LDAP uh, call, it's going to get confused. So we can transform and translate all that for you or represent it as a SQL table if you've got a reporting front end that really needs to make a SQL call to, to do informational checks. Web services, and one of the ones that's most popular now, and the joke I make is that any developer under the age of 25 is only writing in REST. Uh, we have a lot of our customers now using the REST interface to be able to quickly provide access to mobile applications and web applications on the internet to data that is generated in, from back ends and, and provided by Radian Logic in that REST protocol. And really, that's just a simple mouse click uh, difference in the URL path to take an LDAP view and represent it as a REST view. And then on the right, there are all the different applications that can access this information in the format, in the protocol, in the structure that they need it. Each one may be individually some accessing the same uh, view of the information because they need the same data. So you've got a tremendous amount of flexibility. I like to say that in Radiant Logic, there's probably five ways to solve every challenge. And for one customer, the first way might be the best. For another customer, the third way might be the best. And for the third customer, the fifth choice might be the best. What's key here is flexibility within the product. You have a lot of ways to address the challenges that you're dealing with. So I want to sort of wrap up here on, on my part and, and give you some takeaways on, on what we're doing with the solution and then take any of the questions that have come up during the webinar and hopefully address as many of those as possible. So the key focus of today was really how our federated identity service can support web access management around the, the market leader of SiteMinder, CA's product, which is now CA Single Sign-On. And we addressed the two major areas there. The large number of identity stores make it very difficult for someone to be able to look up users and do authentication very quickly. And we can address that problem by aggregating all those identities and providing a single point of access to that data. And also the ability to take the all the profile information from all the places that exist on the network and provide that as one global profile that can be used for policy management, for group membership management, for all the things you can do around authorization so that that user uh, experience is, again, as seamless and as rich as possible and allows you to say yes to the next uh, initiative that comes down the road that has requirements that traditionally you wouldn't be able to uh, respond to. And then the, the third piece there was really the ability to support the functionality within CA SiteMinder for password management and session management and the need to be able to do fast writes on that data uh, and be able to make that information available very quickly so that you can take full advantage of the feature set within CA SiteMinder and we've illustrated how we can do that. Now the real nice advantage here is, as I mentioned earlier in the process, is as you have new stores of identity come in, as you acquire new organizations, as you bring in new platforms, as you bring in new products that need to have their own sense of identities, you can actually bring these into the Radiant Logic uh, Federated Identity Service very easily, very seamlessly, aggregate that information in, and it's immediately available to SiteMinder. And we see this in many of our customers that are doing tremendous amounts of mergers and acquisitions, especially in the healthcare industry, where there's this real consolidation of of regional healthcare providers, of, of buying up all the smaller providers, and, and trying to build a more efficient system by sharing resources, sharing access, aggregating users, and aggregating access to applications. And that is really facilitated by, by SiteMinder's ability to create that portal with multiple hundreds, in some cases thousands of applications, and Radiant Logic's ability to take all those back-end identity stores and provide SiteMinder with a single point for authentication and authorization. 
and it really does make that whole model pay off much more quickly. And I, I would argue has a bottom line effect on the M&A equation where you can actually say financially we can do this more effectively, more efficiently. We are going to get the returns we talked about and in months instead of years, which is the traditional challenge with integrating systems. So just to give you a little bit last sort of touch on where Federated Identity Service uh, can provide value uh, in the web access management, uh, again, to touch on these pieces, faster authentication, um, reducing the total number of calls needed to the back end, reducing that round robin lookup process, and doing it at the speed of a directory, even if the source in the back end is a slow database that may not respond quickly. Being able to uh, grow your WAM deployments and being able to expand the platform as we just mentioned, and still leveraging all those classic benefits of the CA SiteMinder single sign-on uh, solution. Now, the ability to leverage the, the management of user attributes and groups and policies from that one big global profile can't be understressed. It is, it is a shift forward in your ability to start providing your end users with that Amazon experience where I can start to actually provide now a view for my customers across all the products that they buy across all the applications that they access, across all the solutions that I'm providing, and, and give them not only the benefit of single sign-on, but of a rich experience for authentication and authorization, where one identity can, can rule them all. And that's the, the payoff that we're being driven to. The challenge is not necessarily just your competitor. It actually is that general experience that people are going to expect. Just as people expected Google Speeds when they go into an application now, they're expecting Amazon experience. SiteMinder can definitely help you deliver that. When you couple with Radiant Logic Spender or Identity Service, you've got an unbeatable pair. And then custom data requirements. Again, if you have scenarios where you need data from, from other sources, you need to generate data that doesn't necessarily exist, you need to be able to store that data for um, web access management, session management, and password management, you have that capability. And the overall driver here is really reducing your cost of ownership and giving you a return on your investment. Not just your investment in Radiant Logic, but optimizing the investment you've already made in SiteMinder. And that is a large investment. It is, a, it is an integral piece of your structure. It's an integral piece of your environment. And to be able to take something you've already invested and integrated and give it two and three and four times performance increase and optimize that solution without disrupting your existing platform is an amazing capability with, uh, for Radiant Logic to deliver with its federated identity service and a payoff we think that the customers are really appreciating. So with that, I am at the end of my slides. And I will go ahead and uh, take additional questions as they've come up. And let me see here. All right, thanks, Wade. Um, so we had lots of questions come in, just a few minutes left. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, if we don't answer your question on the webinar, someone will reach out to you individually and make sure that every question gets answered. The first question here, we have users in Active Directory and need access to additional attributes in a database. How do you match the right user to the right attribute? And that's an excellent question. And that's one of the common challenges of, of mapping that together. Not only the mechanics of, of joining the user, which we talked about already, but how do I actually know what the right attribute is in the database for the particular user? in the uh, Active Directory that I'm looking at. And one of the nice advantages of Radiant Logic is we have the ability to use any number of fields as a key field to match those particular users together, or that user's uh, attributes on those two systems together. And it can be a different key field for different back ends. So you don't have to have a single company user employee identity number that spans all of your sources. We can look at potentially email address on one platform that matches on another. We can look at a user ID uh, that matches on one platform that matches with another. We can even do things like build uh, attributes, values. We can say, well, there's, there's given name and, and surname and AD, but there's full name in this database. Let me create a new attribute called full name out of the information in Active Directory and then match that on the full name in the uh, database. So even though the attribute keys didn't exist natively, I can generate the keys that potentially can link those accounts together. Now, there may be scenarios where it's a little more complicated. You can't necessarily have a single key that you can find to match on. 
And then we have additional tools in our identity correlation and synchronization engine that lets you do even cascading set of rules saying if this person's first name matches and last name matches, his address matches and his manager matches, then I'm going to say that's the same person. So I can do even more extensive matching on that if I need to. But it's really um, something we take a look at with our customers quite often and, and find the road of least resistance and deal with as many of those joins as we can. Okay, so similar question here. What if I have the same user account and multiple identity sources? And that's another very common instance. The key there is that in a set rare, traditional single sign-on solution, if you go to look across multiple platforms and you find the same user more than once, the single sign-on solution will, will stop usually. You'll get confused because it's expecting one answer to the question of um, where's John Smith. If it gets three answers, it doesn't know what to do. We deal with that by being able to take John Smith on all those back-end platforms. He may exist in multiple AD domains. He may also exist in, in other uh, sources of identity. And be able to join that together and create a single record that has a single pointer to John Smith that we can present to SiteMinder. But in that record, as properties of, that, of, of John Smith, we have pointers to each of the back-end sources that his identity exists on. So we keep that relationship to the back end, but by bringing them together, we build this global list inside Radiant Logic where each user is only represented once, even though they may have been generated from multiple back end sources, but we retain that relationship because that relationship is important. He may authenticate to a different back end source for a different application depending on the way he comes into SiteMinder. So we need to be able to map that one user back to any of those back end sources. And there may be attributes from each of those sources that are used by SiteMinder to do authorization. So we need to keep that connection, but be able to represent it as a single user. And we can do that for you. OK, thanks, Wade. Let's just do one more quick question. Is Radiant Logic certified to work with CA SiteMinder? Yes, we are. We've had a long-standing relationship with CA, and especially with our SiteMinder product. As you can see from this presentation, the, the um, synergy of the two products is very, very strong. In fact, we're used internally by CA um, to support the, some of their internal portals uh, and solve this very challenge. And that has uh, led us to a certification on CA SiteMinder. In fact, the latest version, which I don't have the number in front of you, I believe it's 12 or 12x, 12 um, we are certified on as a source for identity. In fact, we're the only virtualizing uh, platform that is certified by CA SiteMinder as a directory source for their CA single sign-on. And uh, if you go to CA World uh, each year, you'll find us there uh, working directly with CA uh, with our booth and doing presentations and, and really very tightly uh, supported and, and endorsed by the CA SiteMinder uh, product teams as they see this as a real value add to their own solution. OK. Thanks, Wade. Well, it looks like we are out of time for today. Again, this webcast was recorded and will be emailed to you along with the presentation slide shortly.